Welcome to the Meditation Realm Planeswalkers, I'm Caleb, your guide to the Blind Eternities, and in today's video we have more of the wonderful Phyrexia All Will Be One Complete Bundles. Looking forward to opening these up, these are for my viewer Yuri, he's had quite the good luck opening these so far, uh, as far as the value goes, we're going to see how lucky he can be today. Uh, this set continues to pretty much hold its value. The Mythics are really good, uh, very playable, and Commander especially, and Elish Norn and just about every version is holding up value because she's playable in a multitude of formats. Elish Norn is really strong. We have the new set coming out with uh, March of the Machines. Stay tuned for videos on that, my friends. We're going to enjoy opening that. Speaking of enjoying opening things, we're going to start off with the special pack this time see what we can get lucky with here. These, ooh, these oil slick foils have been what's really been making it as far as the value for these bundles. The lands, a lot of people really like this land style. They are unique, they're pretty sweet, and you don't get very many in each pack, so uh, you definitely got to get get multiple if you want a blood ton. First card is Luca, Bound to Ruin. He's a pretty fun card. He's not super strong, but uh, a decent planeswalker. I've liked playing with him so far. And then we have Icar Moon Gauntlet. This is the card that's feeding Super Friends. This is uh, quite a lot of uh, lists are playing this now. If you're in blue, because it does so much work. Uh, taking proliferate and then taking extra turns. Um, <clears throat> giving your planeswalkers that first proliferate is just huge because you scale everybody up real quickly with one or two planeswalkers and then it's really easy to t start taking extra turns. All right. Not too much value in there, though, compared to, you know, getting like an LS Norn or a Traxa, but two decent cards still. Let's see what we can get in our first rare pack. We got a stamped art card. Some of those art cards are worth some money. Most of them aren't. All right. Just getting through our first commons and uncommons here. And, hey, we've also got the real Glacier the Sun Slayer. Uh, really strong card. Uh, this effect... All three of effects are really good in Commander. Drawing cards, destroying enchantments, removing three counters from permanents is pretty relevant because you can kill Planeswalkers off and also it lets you be able to remove 1-1 one, one counters or other counters from creatures in permanents. Like this guy, just dealing damage to another player. Ooh, we got a second rare for the pack. We got Helm of the Host. This is another strong Commander card. Being able to make token copies of your creatures that are non-legendary means you can equip it to your commander and just start stacking stuff if you're going Voltron or just throw it into a deck where you want to make a ton of some dude. Not a bad starting uh, starting pack. What's our next few here? Alright, we've got Kethic, the Crucible Goliath. And then we've got a Jor Kadeen, first Gold Warden. And then a foil common, and then a token. Alright. On to the next pack here. If you haven't already, Planeswalkers, like, share, subscribe. Always happy to have you here. We are starting to get up there in people's view. And now, ooh, first Mythic. We got this open draw, Hunger Dominus. Not bad. He's a strong mythic to play with. He's not one of the most valuable ones in that version, but uh, doubling your power and toughness of all your creatures each turn uh, or during combat is pretty huge. He is definitely a strong green commander guard. We have Serum Sovereign for the rare here. And then a green sun's twilight. Definitely the weakest of the twilight cycle, which is, you know, not common for green to get the weekend, but sometimes it happens. It's the only one that really whips. Uh, I would say the white one's the best. Destroying all the creatures on the board and then creating a new board of 1-1 one, one toxic creatures. Even though they can't block, you've wiped the board and you've put out a pretty big threat that could take somebody out. Argentum, Master Core for the rare here. And, ooh, we got another rare. We have the Howling Abomination. This is one of the uh, secret layer cards from... Um, that they put into the magic form. I believe that was from Street Fighter. 
They've been doing that with more recent cards. There's a lot of what we're not going to get. Uh, Warhammer is a good example of cards that I don't think we'll ever get. Ooh, it's pretty sweet art. Who's this guy? Free from flesh. It's amazing some of the art that gets put on these cards, and then you just... They're put on bad cards, so you just never see them from play. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> and then, great art that does see play is these Phyrexian lands. No matter what version they're in, people just want those cards. Ooh, that's a pretty good hit. We have Shieldred, the Apocalypse, in the Concept Parader art in Full Border. Pretty sweet. It's a pretty good hit. Uh... Definitely a strong mythic to get. All those concept creators are pretty strong. Black Sun's Twilight, another decent Twilight card. Nice, we're at two mythics so far. The average has been three, and we're definitely en route to get that many mythics. Let's see what we can get here. All right. We got a foil borderless planes. Skipping through those comments and uncommons. We got a Vran Executioner Thane for the rare. And then they got a foil borderless Tyvar Jubilant Brawler in his what if frame. Kind of reminds me of One Punch Man with that fist coming in to punch you. He's a decent card. I uh, definitely know in Brawl and Arena, he's probably one of the stronger elf related commanders. Uh, and I believe for the new. Oathbreaker format. He's a good elf commander as well because you can choose him and either a green or black card as the sorcery. And all of your elves just come in and can immediately use your effects for the most part. Buff combo is basically what elves do. Alright, the rare for this pack is... Ooh, we got another mythic. We have Phyrexian Vindicator in its regular art frame. Nice. This guy's pretty strong. Uh, he's been a lot of fun to play with. He definitely makes combat uh, interesting for your opponent. <clears throat> Our list card there was Urza's Factory. Nothing too, nothing too fancy there. But the list has been, list has been kind to me so far. Uh, I think the list is what makes the value out of these set boosters and collector boosters, or uh, set boosters versus collector boosters. I mean, definitely good to get. All right. Now, if only we could open up a Mondrak, that would also be pretty sweet. We have Synthesis Pod. This is one of the commander cards. Uh, pretty unique. Haven't got to play with this one yet, but looking to try it out somewhere. We have a Red Sun's Twilight. Destroy up to X target artifacts. If X has five or more for each artifact destroyed this way, create a token that's a copy of it. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. The exiling effect is kind of rough, but in Commander, you can blow up some big mana rocks that produce a good chunk, like Thran Dynamo and similar effects. Net mana off this card and then just be able to Get a couple hasty creatures and go out. Free spell. I like it. I'm putting it somewhere. Not this card, though. I'm not putting that anywhere. On to the last three packs, Planeswalkers. We're at three Mythics so far, we've, so we've at least hit the standard. I wonder how far above the standard we can get on this one. Alright. Rush through these commons and commons here. And then we got a rare Dark Slick Shore. It's always nice to see the lands. We don't see enough of them ever. Uh, it's good to get those fast lands reprinted. This Cephalid Sentry does work in Commander. If you haven't played him in a blue-white artifact based deck, with how easy it is to create treasures with things uh, now, it is definitely worth playing. Highly recommend it. Every, yeah. Every deck now is so easy to be able to create treasures. As they've made that such an easy thing. And then, oops, we got our next pack here. Some sweet art on some of these uncommons. I do like the Phyrexian art style, even if it is a little darker on some of these cards. The Seed Core. This is a decent card. The Corrupted Mechanic is kind of an inverse of um, Pendle Haven from back in the day. And it's pretty good for the Phyrexian base decks. I think this is going to go up in price later. I don't know if we're going to ever see Phyrexians again, but... They could be one of those things that, uh, if we get another commander set or a flashback set, they return back from the 
beyond where they've been dispatched? We'll see. There's always a chance. And we're on our last pack here. Let's see what we can get lucky with. Can we get another Mythic? Alright, get through these uncommons here. So many uncommons. We got a Zenith Chronicler for our rare. And then a foil uncommon. Nope, alright. So that's it for this one. On to bundle number two. Uh, so we got three Mythics in that one. It's not bad. Not not terribly great either. None of them are super high Mythics, except for the Shieldred. Uh, getting any of those Concept Riders are pretty sweet. But other than that, um, it was a modest one. Let's see if we can get a, a little luckier in this bundle. Again, just going to kind of skip through the little side things that are in here and see what we get in our packs. If you can get these for a decent price, I highly recommend it. For the most part, you are definitely upping in value with just the lands you get between everything. The two land packs, the Phyrexian lands, they're all foil. And then you also have the uh, completed lands in here with your two random mythics. Set boosters with the list slot. You have so much value here. First pack of Let's see what we can get. Oops. Just flinging empty packs onto the table here. Got a stamped Dreadnought art card. Dreadnought is really strong too if you haven't got to play with him in Commander. I highly recommend it. Our first rare is Skrelv, the Defector Mite, in its uh, showcase frame. And then, ooh, we have another rare. We have Orvika, the Enigma Goliath. This guy has been really strong in Commander. Being able to make so many tokens off big spells, and it's real easy for Blue to be able to like untap your lands with you know some old effects, like Frantic Search style cards. Definitely worth playing in those blue red spell slingers deck. Highly recommend. Hard to deal with too. Ward three, pay three life. Definitely recommend it. All right, and then foil counter. On to the next pack here. No mythic so far, but let's see how lucky we can get compared to the last one. You know, showcase shield is always pretty sweet. Any of the showcase craters, uh, always pretty good to get. Uh, concept art. That's the word I'm looking for. Alright. Let's get them through these commons and uncommons to a slow bad, the Iron Goblin. And then a foil uncommon. Alright, nothing too special there. On to the next pack here. Let's see what we can do. If you have not got to play any of this online, on uh, Arena, to the limited environment, I highly recommend it before it cycles out. March of the Machines will be coming, and then you'll get a lot of opportunity to play with this new stuff here in the next week or so. Miglaz, Maze Crusher. I will be having videos on uh, March of the Machines coming up here soon. Looking forward to that. There's a lot of good cards. Um, the random chance that some of those serialized pra uh, Praetors that flip over to be Sagas... I mean, those seem pretty strong to me. Uh, just about all of them had a pretty relevant effect. I think especially that Eurogrask. I've seen some talk about that maybe being a combo enabler somewhere. Just because it's so strong. Even if you have to, you know... It seems like a heavy cost to flip casting multiple spells on your turn. But it adding mana every time you cast a spell is huge. Huge. Alright, our rare here is a Mycosynth Gardens. And then we got a foil column. Alright, nothing special there. Still no mythics yet. Thus far, yeah, we've had dreaded low boxes with only one mythic. It's not common with these bundles, but it does happen. Alright, skipping through. Do -do -do. That Kroskido is actually pretty good in the limited environment if you haven't got to use him. Hey, we got another scroll, but this time he's in his normal art frame. Really good, uh, really good toxic card. The fact that it gives hexproof and unblockable basically makes it really strong in the limited environment and in the constructed environment. You're able to combo it off, especially in constructed with double strike creatures. There's a double strike toxic creature that it's really good with, and just other double strike creatures make it really easy to poison your opponent out real quick, unblocked at that. All right, next pack. 
We have, oh, I was like, oh, is that a year of rask? No, it's his anointer. We have a Mount Couture, the Purity Overseer. And then a Foil Uncommon. Ooh, we have our first Mythic. Here we go. Not a not a super value hit, but a decent one. Mechanized Production. It's one of those random you win the game cards. Pretty easy to pull off now with Treasure 2, because you can just throw it under a treasure and be like, all right, I win on the next turn. Do something. Uh, not too many of those get played in my playgroup. Tell me in your uh, experience and down in the comments if your group plays a lot of those random win the game effects. I like some if they're pretty hard to pull off. That one seems a lot easier with how easy it is to have treasures. Alright, what's our rare here? Thrun or Thrun, Breaker of Silence. And we got a full common here. Dang, not doing too great on the Mythic slot. Let's see how much lucky we can get. We still got a few packs left. The run is definitely a strong commander card. <clears throat> um, I know it sees some play in the constructive sideboard environment against control, but I think commander, it just does work. It's indestructible on your turn. Can't be countered, trample. All good effects. And hard to target. They didn't give it quite hexproof this time, which, you know, I get. Ooh, we got another Mythic. We got Luca, Bound to Ruin, in his normal art frame. Again, I think he's a decent Planeswalker. Being able to add mana, you can only spend him on creatures, but still, he's a Planeswalker that ramps. He can create beasts, and he can deal damage. Definitely worth considering playing. And nice, we have a foil version of the White Sun's Twilight. This is what I was saying is the best version of the Twilight Cycle. Definitely worth considering in your white decks for one of the Wrath slots. Uh, being able, especially in the token ones, because you just pop that out again, you know, you spend seven mana on it, take it the minimum, put it into five, into X, or, you know, you dump, you know, a ton of mana, like 12, and then you have <clears throat> 10 tokens, and then all of a sudden, oh, shoot, you have lethal on board for somebody. What do they do? I really like the art on this style. I wish that they could just give us some of these actual cards like this instead of the art frame. They do every once in a while. We don't get the textless cards very often anymore. Those were quite the experience, but I get it. It's not very good for new players to get a card that you can't read. Especially when it's got a ton of text like it, she happens to have. Alright, we got Norn's Wellspring for our rare. And oh, we got another to Urza's Factory in the list slot. Not the best list card. Down to our last three packs. All right, we're below average on the Mythics. We definitely need to catch up here. Definitely opportunities, though. So many good Mythics in this set. So many new Mythics in the next set that are pretty sweet. Also pretty happy to have so many different Commander decks coming out. Definitely looking forward to looking over the, with you guys with those. Seeing what new sweet, uh, sweet cards we're going to have access to. I believe there's five Commander decks. This guy's pretty good in Commander 2. I consider him for one of your removal creature heavy decks. Uh, Kanker Bloom. He's basically a naturalized that can proliferate and he's on a creature. So those proliferate decks that have a heavy creature base, worth considering. Razor Burst Thicket for the rare. Again, lands, always good. And alright, no mythic there. Down to the last two. Again, thank you for joining me, Planeswalkers. Always glad to have you here. All right, got a furnace there. I do like the art, but again, not many of those card art cards are worth anything. We got a blue sun's twilight for the rare. Another foil cephalod sentry. Last pack. Ooh, <clears throat> let's see if we can catch up and get at least the average of three mythics, or this is going to be a low average bundle. Sometimes it happens. You can't uh, you can't get double Ellis nor in every bundle, but you can get lucky most of the time. For some people, this set has so many good stuff. Though you don't have to hit one of the many versions of Ellis nor to make money. Uh, the Shield Red is definitely worth money that he opened up in the last bundle here. Serum Sovereign for the rare. Second rare is an Archfiend of the Dross, and then we got a Foil Colin.
Nope. So we're a little below average on the Mythics here. We've only got two Mythics. Let's see if he can be redeemed in the Complete Edition pack. See what his oil slick complete foils are. Hopefully this doesn't end up to be a complete disaster for him. But I'm bummed. But we'll see. Again, quite happy if you can get these lands. They're pretty sweet. Definitely worth uh, worth investing into for a lot of people. I know a lot of friends of mine have been trying to get multiples of them for Commander decks. It's just unique. They've got a texture to them. All right. We have Varaska, Betrayal Sting for the Planeswalker Mythic. Pretty sweet one, actually. She's one of the best new removals that have come out in a long time. Uh, that Neg 2, turning a creature into a treasure, is huge. Huge. Being able to nerf, uh, you just straight up nerf death, uh, death triggers, which is pretty huge. And it's uh, turning something into a treasure. It's like, meh. Whatever, not a big, big loss. And then the drawing a card and proliferating for the zero, which is basically a plus, and you get to do it on all the other Planeswalkers, really strong. Especially in, like, the Toxic decks, too. That Neg 9, I've gotten there before on the, in the 1v1 on Arena. But you can get there in Commander, too. Our last one here but um, is Jace, the Perfected Mind. He's another really good one. And how fitting you get both Jace and Braska in the same pack. Lore wise, anyways, is kind of fitting. These two kind of escaped unbeknownst. Nobody knows what's happened in the story with them if they're dead or if they're gone or what's up. It's kind of a mystery. Both good planeswalkers, definitely worth playing in the respective decks. Thank you for joining me, planeswalkers. Always glad to have you here. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you here on the next videos with Marshall the Machines coming up here in the next few weeks. And uh, we'll have some more of that and then several more discussions coming up with the next sets coming up. See you soon, Blamefalkers.